Welcome to Bible Chicks, women who are normally just as is, but we're at our supernatural best when we choose to read, believe, and live out God's Word, whatever's going on in our lives. So get ready to laugh with us and be blessed as you hear our unique stories and inspiring music. Thanks for joining us. It's going to be good. Reading, believing, living His Word. Praying, never receiving all the truth that we've heard. Loving and growing and hoping our faith is showing. Don't you know we're Bible chicks? Hi, I'm Carol Brewer, and I'm so blessed to be your host for another Bible Chicks show. You know, being in a wheelchair and having a disability is only one aspect of who a person is. Today's special guest is renowned singer, recording artist, and author Renee Bondi. It's true that Renee lives as a quadriplegic, but God's power is so evident in her life. Her latest book is titled, Still I Will Praise, The Power of Praising God Even When I Don't Feel Like It. So whatever our situation, we can all praise God right now. I'm going to sing God's Word in Psalms 91, verse 1 through 4, and Psalms 92, verse 1. So sing with me, and then let's welcome Renee Bondi.
hope you're praising God with me. That's such a wonderful scripture that just lifts my spirit, and I know that uh, it will lift yours too. So just remember to go back to your Bible, go to those verses, Psalms 9, verses 1 through 4, and then Psalms 92, 1. That's where you'll find them. Today is my great honor to introduce a super special lady, Renee Bondi. Welcome, Renee. And Hello, to- Carol. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's great to hear your voice and to uh, just have a wonderful time together. You know, we have singing in common. We have our uh, love for teaching in common, lots of that. And we met several years ago in, in Southern California where you are. And uh, it's just great to connect again. On Bible Chicks. It, and I had not realized that you're a music education major as well. So, gosh, we do have a lot in common. It's great. It is. It is. So, you know, you were um, in college and studying to teach and all that. And as that all that hard work, I say all that because there's a lot to it, isn't there? But, mm-hmm. but something happened, and you were engaged at the time. And what happened to you? Well, I had graduated as a music ed major, and I was now teaching choral music in the public school system down here in Southern California. I was engaged to be married to a great guy, Mm -hmm. Mike. Our wedding was just two months away. And one night, in the middle of the night, I woke up out of a sound, deep sleep, standing on the end of my bed, diving headfirst off of the bed, hitting my head on the ground, heard my neck snap, crackle, pop, and I had broken my neck, leaving me cervical, uh, le- leaving me quadriplegic, breaking my neck at cervical vertebrae four and five, and paralyzed from the chest down. To this day, Carol, we still have no idea what happened. That was almost 28 years ago now, and we still don't know what happened. Uh, Dreams so are is... weird because I actually had a dream kind of like that too, but not, I mean, just out of nowhere, I was uh, dreaming something and then kind of going through those motions and I found myself on the floor and this was a, a while ago, just under a oh, lot of... Oh, you did? Yeah, oh my I gosh. Did. And, and, you know, um, several years ago, but I know stress had something to do with, with my dreaming and whatever was going on and I think sometimes stress and you know, can do cause us to do weird things that we would never dream of doing. But here you were, broke your neck. Oh, Renee. And then what did your fiancé uh, say, or how did he react to all of this after the shock? When Mike got the phone call, he was living in Colorado at the time, working there. And when he realized how serious it was, he was on the next flight home. Hmm. He came into ICU And his was the first face that was kind of a bright light for me. Up until that point, it was just my siblings, my parents, of course, the doctors, the nurses. And everybody had such a a dark look on their face of just pure sadness. And Mm -hmm. when Mike came in, he he whispered, he said, hi, hi, honey. Mm -hmm. And he came in and gave me a kiss on the cheek right away. And I looked at him. I was so happy to see him. Mm -hmm. And I said in in, in a whisper, because already my voice had been reduced to a whisper from the paralysis, I said, well, well, sweetheart, it looks like we're going to get the really good parking spaces now. Wow. And he started laughing, and he would tell you that it was right then that he realized, okay, her body is different, her body has changed, but her mind and her personality is the same. And so he stayed with me through the whole thing, Mm -hmm. and we got married one year after I got out of the hospital, and this year we are celebrating 26 years of marriage. Wow. And that's the Holy Spirit. He he definitely is uh, God's man. You know? Well, ab- absolutely. And what I what I do share is I travel around the country as a speaker. If I'm speaking at youth conferences, I often stop at, at at this point in sharing about our story, saying, "Don't settle. Don't settle for junk in your boyfriends and your girlfriends, because you never know when that relationship is going to be tested to the max." Mm-hmm. And ours certainly has. And I've said oftentimes. 
if you'd ever told me that my boyfriend turned fiance turned husband because they start as a boyfriend, if you ever told me that my boyfriend was going to have to help me put my bra on, <laughs> not just off, right. but on, right. I would have said, yeah, right. Uh, and so don't settle for junk in your boyfriends and your girlfriends. I'm so, so grateful to who my husband is. And you gave birth to a healthy boy, Daniel. And I so did. being quadriplegic, you know, how that was, and um, that was also God, no doubt. You know, I'll never forget the very first meeting we had with, with my uh, OB, with my doctor. And uh, he had, after we found out that we were pregnant, he said, now, Renee, I want to go for a natural delivery. And my eyes darted over to Mike, my husband, and, and my OB started laughing. He goes, I know what you're thinking. And I said, well, how in the world can I deliver naturally? I, th- I thought C-sections were made for people like me. I said, I can't push. I, 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 don't, I don't have any feeling from, again, above my chest down. I don't have any power over that. And he said, if the baby comes down the birth canal just right, then contractions will kick in and the contractions will push the baby all the way to crowning and then I will take the baby at the end. And I remember looking at him laughing going, "Uh, remember, I'm the person that fell out of bed and broke her neck. I don't think that I'm the luckiest person in the world. And I said, but we all will be praying. And that is indeed exactly what happened. I started getting these little goosebumps saying that that always tells me that something's happening. And so I asked the nurse, I said, am I having a contraction? And she said, she looked at the monitor and she said, yes, you are. And I said, all right. About five minutes later, I said, you know, I'm still getting my goosebumps, which always tell me that something down below was happening, but I didn't know exactly what. And so these goosebumps around my neck kept going for five minutes. And, and I, I asked her again, I said, I said, am I, am I still having contractions? She looked and, and at the monitor, she said, yes, you are. And said, well, maybe I better check. And this was hours before they thought that I was going to deliver because they had, had induced labor. And so I was getting these goosebumps a lot earlier than they thought I would be. And so she came around and checked under my gown and said, oh my goodness, and told the other nurse, because I was such a high, 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 high risk pregnancy. She said, oh my goodness, there's the baby's head. I think we better get the doctor. <laughs> that's great. You're giving me goosebumps how- with this story. <laughs> it's so, so amazing. I, I, I did not feel a thing through that wow. whole delivery. Wow, that's amazing. And then you've since then, well, that's a, a huge praise. And what's the most difficult thing that you had to face since the accident? You know, now for me, it's been, as I said, uh, just about 28 years. And I think the most difficult thing for me now, so many years later, is is uh, paralysis is just relentless. Mm-hmm. It, that's the word. It's mm-hmm. relentless. As, as much as I'm so grateful to my caregivers every morning that come, I have a caregiver uh, that comes and is here at 7, 7 a.m. until 11 a.m. for four mm-hmm. hours to help get me up, showered, help me use the bathroom, get me dressed, blow my nose, uh, feed me breakfast, yeah. and do some things around the house before she leaves at 11. Um even though I'm very, very grateful for them, I have to say and be very honest that I get so tired of explaining things. Mm-hmm. I just want to get up on my own right. and get going on my own. Right. I'm just so tired of saying, okay, now can you grab, can you grab my blue jeans I'll yes. wear? Okay, they're going to be the third one from the left. Okay, now can you grab my top? It's the polka dot red one. Okay, it's going to be in the closet on the right. Just explaining Mm. just everything from what earrings to put on you to what lipstick to wear. Yeah, It sounds so silly, but when it's every day, 365 days a year, for now 28 years, I, I... I'm just tired of it, even though they are a blessing, and I could not do life without them. I'm just tired of it. 
That's it's your supernatural patience, Renee. Supernatural. Oh, I can't even tell you how many times, how many mornings I have prayed, Father, just please, will you just lay a, a veil of patience, a very lit, a beautiful veil, a chiffon veil of grace. Let yeah. it just flow over me and give me the words that are needed this morning to bless these la- this lady that's coming through to help me. Well, we're going to hear how God has blessed those prayers, Renee. We're going to come back right in a minute and hear what God's doing in your life today. Attention event planners, Carol Brewer brings both the message and the music as she presents the King and I Women's Retreat. You'll deepen your walk with Jesus as you discover the heart-healing truths that establish your real identity as an heiress in His kingdom. Be refreshed and reassured in His presence and delight in singing His praises. Carol works closely with each event planner, ensuring a successful, life-transforming weekend away. Learn more at BibleChicks.com. Hi, we're back with singer, speaker, author, Renee Bondi. Incredible story that she's sharing with us. Now, Renee has, is on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can go to ReneeBondi.com and get all of her information, get her CDs and books. Incredible. We're just so glad that she was able to be with us again. Renee, the doctors told you you weren't going to be able to sing. I know. I and mean, God is a much bigger doctor than the rest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what happened was about four years after my injury, uh, all of a sudden my singing voice started coming back stronger mm-hmm. and stronger and stronger and stronger. Then after that, people started asking what, if I would make a recording of songs that I used to sing at church that seemed to help them get through their difficult times. And so I started the CD, and now we've sold, gosh, almost about a quarter million copies of music of encouragement. That's awesome. And your most recent CD is called Blessings for um, Blessings from Your Mercies in Disguise. And one of the songs that you love to sing is called Praise You in This Storm. So you're in this storm. It hasn't, it's not certainly over, but you're negotiating the storm, aren't you? Yes. When I first heard uh, Casting Crowns' song on on my local Christian radio station, I went, oh, man, that song's totally me. And so I knew that I needed to to record it. So mm. we really scaled it way down. They had a big rock, rock uh, sound behind it, and I just simplified it r- way down so that the listener instantly would hear those uh, all-important lyrics about mm. praising God even even in the storms of life, and um, so that's why I recorded it. Ah, and you you also write, and your your first book is called "The Last Dance, but Not the Last Song," and that tells your story. <laughs> yes, and that's funny how that came about. Was that many many years ago? Uh, some of the very large Christian women's conferences were calling and asking me to come speak and and give my testimony. But they also were asking if I was an author. And I, I said, no, but I, I'm a recording artist, and that's really more of my, my bend is, is towards singing. Well, long story short, they really pushed it hard, and so I ended up writing the last dance, but not the last song. And much to my surprise, it was nominated by by the uh, uh, Evangelical uh, Writers Association for the Gold Medallion Award. And I was I was so laughing because I, I looked up at the Lord saying, that was like the ultimate term paper to write. Huh. It was. Uh, so, we ended up writing the last dance, but not the last song. And my second book is still, I Will Praise, The Power of Praising God, Even When You Don't Feel Like It. Because I know there's times in our, in our life or seasons of life where, where things are just hard. Yeah. And, and what is the power that you're referring to? The you know power of praising God. Okay, where does that power come from? Right. The power that I'm, I'm alluding to is truly that God supernatural power that when we take our focus off of our, our cross, mm-hmm. our difficulty, and turn our heads up to the heavens, up to our Lord Jesus, and start praising Him for all that He is, who He is, 
what his character is, then our focus is off of our cross. And there's huge power when we turn towards our Lord Jesus. Mm. And I have experienced it many times. When I was talking about the issue of the relentlessness of a caregiver coming every morning and me being so dependent on that caregiver every morning and how so often I just want to break from it. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as I hear the doorknob click on my bedroom door, my husband's getting up and getting in the shower to go to work, and right at that time I hear that click, I'll pause and say, Lord Jesus, I praise you. I praise you that I can breathe. Lord Jesus, I praise you for this comfortable uh, flannel sheets I'm on. I praise you for the pretty tree I can see outside the window. I praise mm-hmm. you that that this caregiver wants this job. I praise you that she's on time. Lord, I praise you that she's moving quickly. Lord, mm-hmm. I praise you that she's comfortable doing this kind of job. And as I start praising him over and over and over again, there's much power that he really changes my negativity to a positivity that 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 now I can function in my day. You know, and one of your chapters is titled, Choosing to Praise God When You Are Afraid. So, what's God taught you about that? He's taught me that He will truly walk with me in this storm, that He holds my hand. And I know there's a part of me that, honestly, if I'm going to be very transparent here, I get tired of being in the fog. I want to know, okay, how am I going to... I don't drive. How am I going to get to that doctor's appointment? How am I going to get to the grocery store? All these how, 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 how things that you have to be so organized when you're quadriplegic because you cannot be spontaneous. You can't, oh shoot, I forgot that that loaf of bread. Darn it, I, I got to turn around and go back to the grocery store. Well, I, I can't do that because I'm on a clock paying somebody to drive me. Well, what God has taught me about fear is not not to fear him in the details of my life. He is faithful in the big, so therefore he will be faithful in the small. So whenever I'm in that fog, and yes, I get tired of of, of being in the fog, I want to know, well, how am I going to get that done? How is that going to work out? And he just lays his hand on my shoulder and says, I am here. Just take the next step that you have to do. Well, and what scripture? Can you think of one right off the top of your head that, that you draw? Because we have so many in our heart, hidden in our heart. There are so many. The, the be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer and thanksgiving, all those are things, you know, whatever is true, right, noble, pure, lovely, admirable, think about such things. But the one that really is 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 sitting in my heart now that I, that I have committed to memory has been in uh, Romans 8, 22. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the redemption of our bodies. That's my favorite line. Mm. We, we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the redemption of our bodies, for in this hope we are saved." And that, and what Paul's talking about that is the hope of heaven. And there's nobody listening to this broadcast more eagerly waiting for the redemption of our bodies than I am. I'm so excited. I've often said that, boy, at my funeral, absolutely no dirge music. I want a 30-piece swing band because I'm going to be dancing. I'm going to yes. be dancing in heaven yet again. Woohoo! Yes, really. Will you just share your heart with our audience with, uh, and pray for all of us who are listening, uh, just whatever God's laying on your heart? Sure, it's a privilege to. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much, Jesus, that you took the nails for us, for each one of us listening, no matter what we've done in our life, you love us more than we love ourselves. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this, and I ask that you would wrap your arms around every person listening today, that you will bring us to your chest, to your land, the land of milk and honey once again, where we will be dancing with each other. Thank you, Jesus. 
We love you. In your name we pray this. Amen. Amen, Renee. And thank you so much for sharing your heart. You know, our listeners can, uh, and I'll give that information in just a second, our listeners will be able to find out where they can get your CDs and books, and you have so much to author. So thank you again for blessing us today. You're very welcome, and thank you so much for having me, Carol. May the Lord continue to bless your ministry powerfully. Amen. Thank you. And now, here's Renee Bondi. I was sure by now, God, you would have reached down and wiped our tears away, stepped in and saved the day. But once again, I say amen, and it's still raining. As the thunder rolls, I barely hear your whisper through the rain. As your mercy falls, I raise my hands and praise the God who gives and takes away. And I'll praise you in this storm, and I will lift my hands, for you are who you are, no matter where I am, and every tear. I will praise you in this storm I remember when I stumbled in the wind You heard my cry to you And raised me up again My strength is almost gone How can I carry on? If I can't find you But as the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper through the rain I'm with you And as your mercy falls I raise my hands and praise the God who gives And takes away Praise you in this storm, and I will lift my hands, for you are who you are, no matter where I am, and every tear I've cried, you hold in your hand, you never left my side, and though my heart is torn, I will praise you in this storm. to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I lift my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I will praise you in this storm And though my heart is torn I will praise you in this storm 
Renee Bondi gives us so many reasons to praise him, whatever storm we're going through. So go to ReneeBondi.com and learn all about her ministry and where you can get her books and CDs again. And thank you so much for taking time to be with us today. Go to BibleChicks.com and listen to our wonderful guests. They're archived there. You can just listen anytime. Also, please go to Facebook and like us at Bible Chicks with Carol. We'd love to interact with you, see what's going on on in your lives, and how can we pray for you too? Thanks for being with us. Remember that in Him we live, move, and have our being. God bless you. Reading, believing, living His Word, praying, never receiving all the truth that we